Hello, it's Bones here, and today I'm replacing these lower ball joints on my 04 Dodge Ram. Um, this one on this side has been creaking and making banging sounds. So, thinking it's a uh, time to replace it. I knew it was part of in there. Yeah, lower one right down there. I knew it was time to replace it when I was doing my steering. But, uh, yeah. Hopefully this will be easy. I got all my tools, I think, laid out here that I'll need. Breaker bar, metric and standard wrenches, because for some reason Dodge has both on it. And this tool, which is very hard to track down around here. That is a ball joint remover. You basically cannot do the job without one. <laughs> and I rented at a not so local Canadian tire. First things first, I'm going to jack it up, but I think I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place the jack under the control arm there so it supports the weight and doesn't allow the spring to go whoosh <laughs> and, you know, destroy everything. I'm hoping I can get away with not tearing everything apart. So, I'll get started. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do, or you gotta do, is you gotta loosen these a bit. Don't take them all the way off. Oh. It's good to loosen them when they're on the vehicles on the ground. Make sure you ha have your uh, back wheels chopped and your emergency brake on so the vehicle doesn't move anywhere. need to lift it high enough to get the vehicle off the ground and get a jack stand under just in case. remove any other parts because the problem with removing, removing all sorts of parts is you start finding more things that are wrong with it that could go another 50,000 kilometers but someone like me gets all worried. I don't like playing that game. I have a strong belief that if it's making noise, fix it. Because you'll probably regret it later down the road when you're in the ditch upside down and the wheel's sitting 50 feet away. Now what I am going to do is I'm going to remove the front brake caliper. 
and the rotor just so I can get to different things easier. Okay, I got that loose. Now, with any luck, I might be able to remove this whole thing. Yep. <laughs> Something like that. Set it somehow out of the way. Oh, pressure my finger. All right. I think I got something high enough. I don't want to put any stress on that brake line. Okay, I've separated the caliper from the uh, from the rotor because that was just easier. Let's set this out of the way. And now we've got a bit more room to work with. Um, now the fun part. There's a shot of the ball joint. I'm going to get that nut undone. That shouldn't be too hard. Wouldn't have to be the same as that, would it? Would not. About. Where is it? Oh. Concrete's hard on the knees. Alright, I gotta find the right sock. Okay, after a bit of figuring out, I got this pulley puller on here. Well, I think it's also a ball joint separator. I tried using my trusty pickle fork, but it's not wide enough in here. So, hopefully this will pop it off. I tried whacking at it with a hammer, nothing. A little tricky to get this one in past the dust shield. Come on. It'll probably just pop violently. Come on. Holy. Of course, the jaws are separating. There you go, loosen that off. Full contact on that. set up the bigger one. It's just really hard to get that in behind there. I'll set up the bigger one. All right. Well, I got it separated. I wish I would have got that on tape, but this thing worked like a dream once I got it dialed in. Kept slipping off the spindle and it was frustrating the heck out of me. Probably been trying to separate this for the last half an hour, 40 minutes. If not longer. Come on, get out of there. 
The other side should be easier since it's actually been done once. Should. Not that old a hell though, but. I realize now why they say you have to take everything apart. Because you need to get the CV shaft out in order to get that out. In order to get the CV shaft out, because I've already got that undone, I had to put the tire and everything back on to break that nut. You have to uh, take the upper control arm off and take this off. So that's not fun, but well, we'll get the spindle off, get that done. Um, I think that's the size. And that's the size I used. The axle nut. Can't really see it. One to three eighths. So one inch and three eighths. And I had to use a breaker bar. Plus, I used uh, that giant breaker bar right there, which is like a foot and a half long. I added that bar to it. This is the old one. Flops around. I can clearly move it. You can hear that. You move it up and down quite a bit. This is the new one. I can't even move it. And no, there's no play up and down. So that's got to go in there. So, zoom me back out here. That's where this tool here comes in play. Pretty sure that one goes up on there. goes up in here. As far as I can tell, that's how that goes. Let's see if I can get any luck here. <laughs> oh, I have a feeling this is going to be fun. How the heck does that stay on there? Rocking the whole truck. I think it's breaker bar time. Seven eighths. Nope. Let's get my damn CV shaft out of the way. You see why this would have been impossible without this tool.
that's the old one. All floppy and sounds like sounds like crap. Just had three little like three or four little punch downs that were keeping it in there. Compare it to the new one. The new one's got a shorter bolt. But only because it only because it doesn't have uh doesn't have this part right here. It's hard to see. That's where you get a wrench on. Well, this one looks like you just hold it with a screwdriver. But you shouldn't need to hold it. So I'll clean this up and get the new one on. Let's see, in the kit, you get castle nut, new pin, washer, and a snap ring. Oh, and a grease fitting. Which is great to have ones that are greasable because when they're not greasable you can't service them especially when you're like me who goes off-roading and it's good to grease your stuff like i'll never buy a tie rod again like this because it has no grease fitting it doesn't last as long this has a grease fitting only problem is i hate the boot on that they made the boot too big or something and it's squished really funny like now it's important to note, you may be able to see some writing there. Turn around. It says mount inboard. That basically means point that that way. In towards the truck. And it also says lube up the outside here. I'm going to use some move it stuff works great and lube up the inside of this so it goes in nice and smooth that all good to go there make sure that's pointed in that in there that doesn't want to stay on its own that's all right Let's see if I can find a I, I found a cup that'll fit it I got it set up I want to say that this device requires like 20 hams <laughs> That is a pain in the butt because this is separate, this is separate, there's a little thing in there that's separate, this is separate. This doesn't hold itself in. So, but I think I got her and I can start cranking her. Is that actually going in? can see better than I can. So close. Right. Seems pretty tight there. Snug. It looks like she's snug. One last try. I think we're there. Here, 
light. Looks like it's there. Get out of there. Put my finger on there. And nothing gets in there. And I just need to get a snap ring pliers. Get this popped on. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Oh. I just need a little bit more. Apparently the camera cut me off because it ran out of room, but uh, yeah, got the grease fitting on there. Ideally you want it pointing backwards and to a spot where you can get a grease gun in. Because if you have it pointed backwards then that way crap will be, well it'll still build up on there but it'll just be easier. Less crap hitting it like salt water and whatever. and mud but I'm gonna put all this back together got my spindle over there hopefully it goes back together smooth then I gotta tackle the other side at least the other side I know I have to tear all this apart um, I still haven't figured out how I'm gonna tighten that to the proper specs but yeah I think that's all I'm going to do because I'm running out of room on my camera. If you like this uh, video, hit the like button, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Have a good day.